yay. We actually, oh, Scotland. Hey, you know what? I My mom was 100% Scottish. She was from the Telford, Tel, it was Telford, but the Telford. And I'm trying to think, um, and then we go back to even Braveheart. We are in that clan. I can't even think what the heck it is, uh, whatever that is. My son was thought always thought we were dorks, you know, such a dorky family. And then when he found out that we were from that lineage, it, it stepped it up. So you might see a little something in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Normally Lennox comes here Tuesday, Thursday for um, home learning uh, or distant learning. I have to say that right or my daughter goes nuts. But this morning she's having real bad tummy issues. And so uh, she's here just hanging. And I want to show you, I ordered this for my journaling uh, off Etsy. You can um, order sorry scraps or whatever for pretty dirt cheap. And so I'm letting her open that package and go through it. All right. This is the one she wants. We're going to do an underwater scene in her next journal. You know how we're doing cloth journals. So she's just looking through them, deciding what she wants. Again, it's on Etsy, and you just uh, put sorry scraps or whatever. And they're just, I mean, I'm starting to like shiny things. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, our internet did go out. It was out for a day and a half, including our TV, which was monumental because it was impeding on my, um, the Durrells of Corel. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going in it. I'm going into withdrawals. Uh, yesterday when Lennox was here for, um, distant learning, <clears throat> we always, she's very, very good. She will, um, do what she's supposed to do. And then we do a PE break, and that would be with John or Baba, and maybe they're take, playing baseball or something like that, um, and or we might have a snack break, and or we might have an art break. Well, yesterday, we decide, uh, I, she's trying to earn money. She wants to get an American Girl doll, so she's trying to earn money, and so I pay her to water my rose garden, okay? So yesterday, we took the first, ooh, that one should be in there more. We took our first cut. And um, I taught Lennox how to discern, see that guy's droopy, what's going on? How to discern exactly where to cut roses and, and all of that. Why is that? It's in the water. Huh, weird. Anyways, so today she's just um, playing couch lizard, <laughs> which I adore. I just love this kid so much. So, okay, on Wednesday, the good news with it going down on Wednesday is that I didn't have to prepare anything today. I could just show you what I, you know, what I was going to show Wednesday. Um, Tuesday, I, oh, oh wait, before we get into Joe Cunningham and all of that, Sue, let me show you, uh, the room is coming along. I am so freaking excited, but to say it's chaos here, and I think I showed this Wednesday, would be being extremely generous. <laughs> That's our guest bedroom. Hey, if you're a friend of mine and you want to come spend the night, guess what? No, <laughs> absolutely no. So there you go. Um, that pure maple syrup sign. Oh, you can see our quilt down there at the bottom. That pure maple syrup sign, that was from my grandpa's in Door County. You know, he did orchards and all that kind of stuff, but they tapped uh, maple, they had maple syrup trees on the property and they would tap it and they would can it. And I remember back when I was a kid, the can one of those cans cost like seven dollars. So multiply that out for what it would cost now. And I can remember in Livermore when we went through the last can of Grandpa's maple syrup. <laughs> My heart. And so I am a maple syrup snob. All right, enough of that. So I did. I'm having problems in the forum. John's not. I. Don't understand it, but I was able to pull up a couple pictures, but that's okay. Um, this is Kay's, and I don't know, Kay, if this is done or where you're at, but I got to tell you that polka dot background is screaming joy to me. I wish I had thought of that. It's absolutely wonderful. And I'm going to blow it up right now. Let's see. It looks like you're using our, no, no. Are you, yeah, you're using the kit. Um, I don't think this is like Photoshopped. I don't think so. So uh, 
Let's go take a look at the next one, Jill. Um, Jill. Jill decided, let's blow it up, that she has enough fabric in her stash to bust it. <laughs> really? Jill? I don't know anybody like that. <laughs> this is a marvelous scrap quilt. All right. And then we have Suzanne. Let's see what she has. Suzanne, I believe, again, I prepared this on Wednesday, and you know how brains go. Yeah, that's all cave stuff. I bet that's leftovers from the other project that we did. You can't go wrong in this. And then this morning, in trying to get ready for this, um, Anne put up some pictures of 30s fabrics, and I saw it on John's computer large. Beautiful. It will be beautiful. There will be nothing boring about that quilt at all. If you've got some screamers like I showed the other day, you might want to put those in. Whoops. Let's take a look at Donna's. Donna, Donna, Donna. I think Donna was doing a, a scrap a scrap busting too. Guys, I love this pattern. I love this pattern. And I hail and bless Barbara Brackman for her new book, I Would Not Have Seen It. Because it was in the old book, but it just got lost in the um, translation. And as soon as you could see it in color, it, it was what I knew I had to do. Okay, so this is Orisa. Orisa. Orisa, I do not know how to pronounce your name, but it's beautiful. And I wonder if it's a family name or if you're from another country, because I've not seen Orisa. Orisia. Um I love that name. Anyways, Batiks. Yep, let's hear it. Let's hear it, people. Batiks. Okay. All right. So. Okay. So the painters are going to be done today. And the flooring is going to be in next week. And then it's probably going to be about... Oh, maybe four weeks before I get the shelving. And today I'm into hardware, like when you get new hardware for your kitchen. And you forget that you almost have to put a lien on your house to buy that stuff. I didn't figure that into my budget, okay? But that's okay. All right, so Joe Cunningham. Joe Cunningham called, got hold of me a while back and said, do you want to come in and quilt for a day. He had a quilt on a frame. And it's been a long time since he's had a quilt on a frame. And I said, absolutely. I would love to come into San Francisco. And he did a video with me. And then I did one with him. Actually, I did a couple with him. And what I loved about being in there with him, well, first of all, let's take a look at his work. His work is extremely um, artful, avant-garde. He has had exhibits in museums. Um, I think museums has bought his work. He hails from being an extremely traditional quilt maker, as I. And he does things very different than me. And when I went in to hang out with him and quilt around the frame, um, it reminded me of the olden days of, I don't say women, because guys, you know, sitting around a frame and quilting. And it kind of made me think of, we talked and it kind of got off, off topic. And in the olden days, or maybe even now, if there was a big frame that was set up, you might have kids underneath, like threading needles and this and that. And if a kid was smart enough, they would know to be quiet and keep their ears open because there's a lot to be learned if you're sitting under a quilt frame while adults are working around it. So let's just take a look. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Let me do an intro, Joe. Okay. Okay. I'm in San Francisco hand quilting with Joe Cunningham today. Lucky me. Ah, lucky me. So, Joe, this is, I've never done this before. It's big stitch and improv. Oh, I thought you meant you'd never hand quilted before. Oh, yeah. Well, not pretty good, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You, uh, you, oh, you, you catch on real quick. <laughs> right. Well, the big stitch. You, you know, uh, what you and I learned was that the littler your stitches were, the better, right? Yes. Uh, back a long time ago, 40 years ago, uh, when we were getting How started. How many to the inch? 
eight, nine <laughs> stitches in it, yeah, <laughs> 10 stitches in the end. So that's a, that was the whole thing. The, the uh, women would go to the quilt show and, and hold a little ruler up there and count. I've never seen that. I've seen it. Oh, uh, wow. And, but anyway, that was the thing, right. Everybody wanted to know how many stitches to the inch. Uh -huh. And so uh, uh, now everything has changed over the years. And now the latest, all the, all the new quilting has to do, it, it uh, is an imitation. It's a combination of Indian Kantha style Right. Right. And uh, uh, the, the sort of bigger stitches that people find in African American quilts, like uh, like the G's Bend quilts, uh -huh. they're, they're so influential. And so, and, and and the other thing that happened is so big stitches are the current way that mm -hmm. people quilt. The other thing that happened is when you and I got started, or at least I'm putting my. Uh, when did you start? 1979. Dude, 1979. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, um, uh, it was quilting designs, which was, that's right, what I was really into. Right. And I'm, you know, Those uh, feathers we've and both written books and, yeah, yeah. About, about quilting designs. And nobody does quilting designs uh, in the, the, I mean, those designs are all dead. And, and they're so, different. Yeah, they're and in modern, in, in modern uh, uh, quilts, you know, in modern oh, quilting, right, right, right. Uh, there's little circles and there's straight lines, and then there's these geometric things that, but, but, the, but, uh, and then there's the fussy, fussy kind of quilting that still gets done. Uh huh. Uh, but um, well, this feels but, really good. I, I, but I want to do something different, and so I want to do big stitch quilting with. Uh, and I, I've, I've done everything freehand for many years. Yeah. See, and this just blows my mind. I've never done anything. And here like you this. are. You made a beautiful yeah, flower gonna, there. Like, like, Joe, are you going to tear that out? I'm not going to tear it out. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to tear it up, um, and um, uh, 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 and using designs because uh, organic designs like this, which uh, uh, are what I cut my teeth on, yeah, 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 uh, are just so little done anymore. And I I love to use the quilling designs to extend the metaphor of the quilt, right? Right. Like, and so this this is I'm quilting a jungle here. We're quilting a, uh -huh. a jungle here. There's thorn bushes and. There's uh, uh, flowers, there's gigantic leaves over there, and all kinds of stuff. So here's the thing, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. um, when I sat down and started doing this, yeah. it's like it's been a while, yeah. um, you kind of, just to break it down, you'll pick like three motifs mm -hmm. or four, and then just organically do them? Or That's right. Or you just make the rule up? Well, see, there you go. Uh-oh. There you go again. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, the thing, the idea that there's rules, uh -huh. Is that's foreign to me? Um, there's, there, there's no. I, 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 this is my quilt. That's true. Who would have made a rule about it? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my own in in uh, interior quilt judge, uh, <laughs> which is someone I am trying to fight against. Uh, that that judgmental voice that we all have and I have. Well, I like to say it's discernment. Well, okay. <laughs> I, I I like to say it's judgmental. <laughs> And uh, um, and it stops me from doing so many things. It's that inner little voice that yeah. you've got to just yeah yeah. That, that, yeah that says no you can't do that you can't do that you can't do that and um, yes you can yeah you can, I, I, you can do anything I mean that's the great thing about quilts is that you can do anything you can think of. Now this cloth is crazy and yeah. I've, I've never worked with it. I've never seen yeah. it. Tell us about it a little bit. Well, it's Japanese ikat. Uh, I, I get it from uh, a place in Seattle called Oken Arts, O-K-A-N okay. Arts. And they import um, uh, antique Japanese uh, fabric. But it's wool. And this is wool. Uh, they get a little bit of this sometimes and uh, I often will get it. Uh, it's it's very fine. It's, it's it's like the weight of cotton. It feels beautiful. Pretty much. It and feels it, beautiful. Yep. Yeah. And this is a woven pattern. It's so it looks the same on either side. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's it, it's an e cut. So the threads are woven before the fabric is dyed. And <coughs> and you've got bamboo batting. I've never worked with bamboo on the inside. This is really easy to quilt. There's not, nothing to it. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, uh, wool is a little easier, but. You know, bamboo is it, it's fine. Yeah, no problem with it. Is that what you use primarily all the time? Uh, no, it's just that I happen to have a, oh, there. a mold of it, <laughs> and so that's what I'm using at the moment. Okay. Uh, what I steer clear from is cotton when I'm 
hand quote. Yeah. Well, I did for a long time, and uh, I finally developed the strength in my hands. Because that was the frustrating thing in the early days, like a mountain mist, cotton batting or something. Oh, you couldn't, you couldn't do it. <laughs> like, how am I supposed to do this? I, uh, you, you could not. Do you know? Let me tell you a story. When uh, yeah. we lived in San Francisco and I was going to San Francisco State, yeah. I had to make a quilt to finish up. I yeah. might, to, I could graduate. I was a unit short, oh. and um, I went to the quilt shop in town. My grandma started it in the '30s, and. I think Sonia Lee Barrington might have owned that quilt shop. I don't huh, know. Uh -huh. But I said, I want a batting like cotton that they would have had in the 30s, like with seeds and everything. Uh -huh. and she she produced, and I had upholstery fabric for the batting. Oh, wow. Joe, I am still a quilter today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that would have been just terrible. Oh, terrible, terrible. It was made for upholstery padding. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, there you go. There you go. All oh, right. geez. Now, Joe Cunningham, uh -huh. I'm in prep. I'm going to do it. Okay. But come on, come on. Here we go. I need to bring you a needle threader next time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just cut, cut that ratty hand off. I did. I know it's oh. ratty again. Uh -huh. Okay. All yeah. right. So, how does it feel being on a frame? Because you're on a long arm, too. Uh, I oh. use a long arm most of the time. Uh, being on a frame, I've quilted maybe 150 quilts. By hand? Yeah. Yeah. And so being on a frame is like being home. Thank you. It's like being home, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It feels good. People have this idea that that quilting a quilt by hand is drudgery that must be avoided oh, it's at all costs. Oh, it's wonderful. What do you have to put in here? Um, Some leaves coming this way? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Nice. Uh, and it's not drudgery. It's you know, you get into a, a I think an alpha brainwave state, uh, and it's uh, the hours fly by. Um, and this is not a fancy frame, and it works just fine. Yes. Now these legs that hold the, the frame, all it is is these sticks with fabric uh, mm -hmm. uh, stapled to them, mm -hmm. held together with C clamps. Mm -hmm. These legs. Watch yourself. Okay. It looks like this, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a plan for it. If you Google Joe Cunningham Threads Magazine, right? Okay. Twenty, two or three or four years ago, I wrote an article for him. And they, they, it's on the internet still? Yeah. Oh, wow. And they made a, a, a schematic, a beautiful uh, schematic of how to make these legs. It's very simple, but... Um, is it free? And it's free. Nice. Yeah. Again, what is it? It's uh, just Google Joe Cunningham Threads. Threads. And that's really. Oh, uh, I know a secret. Yes. I got invited to Pokey's wedding, or she oh. asked me, or she asked. Oh, you're going to be a maid of honor? No, I'm going to officiate. No. <laughs> you're going to officiate. No, Carrie, Carrie Bloomston is. Uh -huh. No, there was a. This is okay, and then I've got to hang up because I'm getting too personal here. There was a. <laughs> okay, when's the last time you've gone to a wedding? Like never. Uh, we well, have more friends than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My godson got married a couple years ago, and I went to his wedding in Mexico. It was a lot of fun. Oh. Well, somebody in our family was getting married the same day Pokey was. Oh. And it got postponed. So I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. And you know what she's going to do? And, and the invitations have not gone out. And maybe if I'm really not invited, I'm still showing up anyways, because that's how we roll, you know? <laughs> she is going to have people bring quilts and hang them on her tennis court. Oh, nice. So it's a quilt show, too. Yeah. Okay, enough of that. Too personal. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so any last tips, wisdom? Uh, wisdom. You don't have to use knots. I already talked to you that. Look how much. I love having you here. Now, I wish I would have learned something. Now, what is it? Uh, this is how you knot. Yeah. <laughs> um, you don't have to use knots. You, you can just quilt both ends of the thread. Yeah, so that's what he does. He starts in the middle, and then... But to me, that's just one more needle I have to thread. Uh huh. And, and thread instead, you thread two different threads. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's the same thing. So okay. Uh, yeah. And I want everybody to see how neat you are. Yeah, that's right. I have oh. a little piece of paper. See, so here's one here. I don't know if it's on screen or not. I think it might be. But then he could pick up and then quilt in the other direction. Yeah, I'll do that. You know. So. Yeah. Okay. More this. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So what are you doing on mine? you got some things uh, going on. I do. This Saturday, uh, what's the date? May 15th, <clears throat> is my 12th 
uh, quilt freedom workshop where uh, I have uh, I first spend time looking at old quilts and talking about them in a very amusing way, I have to say. <laughs> no. Uh, no, it sounds like I'm bragging. No, you're not funny. Yeah, I know, I know, I'm not funny. <laughs> and so uh, we look at old quilts for a while. I'm gonna have a special guest on, a, a piano player that's gonna talk about art and, and uh, uh, patterns because we're doing patterns. And then I give lessons and, uh, and teach people how to do this. Quilt Freedom Workshop. Is it too late to sign up for that? No, you can sign up for it uh, right up until 9 a.m. Saturday morning. You go to my website, Joe Cunningham Quilts, and okay. you'll see that. I'm Alex Anderson Quilts. Because somebody stole Joe, uh, Alex Anderson from me. Yeah, somebody, long, a long <laughs> time ago when I wanted to, that's why I became Joe the Quilter. Yeah. Was because uh, I, I wanted to go to joecunningham.com. And, uh, Beat you to the punch. Oh, and there's so many Joe Cunninghams. Wow. Well, uh, and the JoeCunningham.com is a rock photographer who oh. lives in St. Paul, Minnesota. Seems like a nice guy. I think my Alex Anderson is some accountant in Europe or something. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. uh, no offense. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I... Some of my best friends are accountants <laughs> in Europe. Now, hold on. Right. I'm married to one. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah well, we're... we're were uh, similarly named, yes. uh, with uh, common names. That's because we started in 1979. That's right. Now, that is in the Bay Area when it was just starting to explode. Just explode. Yep. I have some great teachers. Well, actually, way back in the day, I took a class from you. I'm sure you remember that Sterling. You took thing. a class from me uh -huh. at Mills? Um, I think it was an EBHQ. Uh -huh. Did you ever teach there? Yeah. Yeah, EBHQ. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wish I would have known then that you were going to be famous. <laughs> I would have been nicer to you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I am going to, we are opting not to do lunch. Is that right? Stitch, don't you think? Oh, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I can, I mean, uh, I, we're not going to finish this whole quilt. So I think we might as well, I, I was hoping that I had enough done that we would finish it up and then do a big reveal. I dance. You dance? When I take it off the crane. Well, that might be worth doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> uh, yeah. You really don't want to see it. Oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> see, although, although you are married to a modern dancer. That's right, that's right. <laughs> I'm like Elaine on Seinfeld. <laughs> uh, you dance, I drink wine. Oh, uh, When maybe. I get mine out of the crane. Oh, uh, you know, we might... Anyway, uh, now uh, you'll screw it up. I don't want to screw it up. I, uh, we can just uh, unroll it and look at the back and well, see. Well, we can do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I am. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> so let me show you. And I got some questions what it looked like. And yes, we did screw it up by taking it off the frame. <laughs> We did the best we could to get it back. Okay, number one, there was no pattern, and this was new to me. Basically, he picks about five motifs, and that's what he does over and over. So let's take a look at the whole quilt. I think this is it. No, this off the frame. And you can see, well, no, it's still on the frame, excuse me, but we took it off the roll bars, okay? And then... He turned it around, and it was amazing. Absolutely. Oh, no, no, no. Before I turn around. <laughs> so you wonder what that is. Okay. So you can see it in the video, one little aspect of it. Uh, he mentioned this fabric was wool. Well, he got it on the frame, and guess what happened? Some moths decided to delight in it. So he's like, whoop, what the heck? Let's just, let's just embroider on top of it. And see, that's the beauty of what Joe does, is it's completely improv, completely. So let's take a look at the back. Now he, I didn't do any stars like that, but okay, there you see the flowers that he does. And then there's, um, towards the bottom left, you can see kind of a ziggy zaggy, and that's the thorns. And actually this quilt has uh, some political backing in his own mind on why it was made. I'm not even gonna go there because I would screw it up for sure. Look at those flowers. Guys, this is just improv, complete improv. I've never done that, that scares me. Okay, here's another one. Look at that, that's the bottom, yeah. 
Those, I did do one of those flowers. I did a leaf and I did, um, I also did stems. So he pulled up some pictures of how he did this. Again, his stuff is very, very avant-garde. It's, I don't want to say it's cheese bend. I don't want to say it's anything like that. It is Joe Cunningham. And he comes from traditional. I, I mean, stamp it a bigger traditional. No, we were equal traditional, equal traditional. Okay. So what he did was he took this beautiful wool cloth. Okay. And, um, then he just kind of folded it up there on the wall and then he put that on it. I love this quilt and I believe that's a checkerboard from Moda, I believe, I believe. Okay, so let's take a look back. Now, when we put it back on the frame, we couldn't get it, you know, we had to roll it up to where it was. We couldn't get part of it flat. Okay, and, and it was because it was improv piecing, but he said, no worries, it could be quilted out, not a problem at all. And yes, he is a hoot. I have gone to some of his online classes and they're absolutely beautiful. I see a little head. You wanna go outside? Okay, duck down, crawl out. <laughs> So we got some questions. Okay, so no, we are not following a pattern. We aren't following seams. It's completely improv. And what I'm using for a needle, now this was different too. Okay, the smaller the number, the bigger the needle. I think we were using like a five. And, and I mean, that's huge. It's kind of like what my dad would use. And so that was really weird. Typically, I quilt, hand quilt with a nine or a 10. All right. So that was a completely different thing. But then again, too, we were using that pearl cotton. Um, the other thing, as far as working with a thimble and quilting away, I learned to do that. I can quilt in both directions. I use my pointer finger and I use my thumb to go away. He had a thimble on his middle finger that wasn't fancy. And he, he could quilt in all directions just pivoting the needle on one side of the thimble, okay? So I believe it's um, a Google Joe Cunningham Freedom Workshop. He's He's got chops, you guys. He has serious chops. And before I left, I said, can we do a uh, tour of your studio? So I've got that too. So no knots. Okay, this was new to me. So let's take, um, this is your thread, all right? And what you do is rather than knot it and pull it, you when you go into the fabric, you come up and then you leave this big giant tail on this end. So you're quilting this way with this thread or whatever. When you run out, then you can go back and quilt this way with this thread. And then I say, well, how do you how do you finish it off? And what he would do is um, kind of weave it between threads in the middle of it. But that quilt of his now is no longer a, a knot version. It's got knots in it. All right. So that's my, it's not my daughter. That's my granddaughter. Okay. Now. Yeah. I just, I love him. He's a hoot. No knots. Um, so I would go to uh, Joe Cunningham, Google Joe Cunningham quilter. <clears throat> dot com and it will take you right there. Um, when, when, so Jackie, every time you turn your hoop, you're wasting time. Now I'm going to tell you this because she's talking about working with her thumb. I'm going to tell you this right now. Um, when I am on a hoop, which is rarely because I love working on frames, I don't use the thumb. I do turn it because inevitably that thimble is falling on the ground and I'm having to find it. When you, when I learned to quilt with my thumb was this, I bought a panel. It was when Joey was a baby, those printed panels, and I quilted in all directions and halfway, and then I let myself use my thumb. Your thumb stitches are going to be bigger than your middle or your pointer finger in the beginning. In the end, I prefer working with my thumb. And maybe at some point with these lessons, we will do a little hand quilting. Are you guys interested in that? I know there's video in my classroom on the site, but we could do it again and then I can take questions and stuff like that. Actually, I think um, 
I think that's a super plan. Nuts. I think we're good. So, yay. On Monday, we're going to sew on the blades onto the spools. And yes, I am going slower this round. And I've gotten people saying thank you so much. So they're not in such a heated mess to get everything done to keep up. And I think as we start to reopen, that's kind of how this is going to roll. So, because I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to get my life back. Um, next weekend, I'm going to Cindy Needham's for a workshop. But on Monday, I'm going to show you how to do the spool, or how to get the blades. On Wednesday, we're going to take a tour of the warehouse. And um, then I'm going to run off on Friday. And I just want to tell uh, hand quilting, please. Um, not interested in hand quilting. Well, Christy, you'll just have to hang out and see if I say something funny. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's important to have all things in your arsenal. Okay. So you taught me how to quilt, Marty, um, with, in a class at the quilt shop in Tracy. That had to have been like... 35 years ago? Yeah. Wow. So, okay. Yeah, Monique, we still kind of have a lockdown here, not nearly as vigorous. And I know every, I mean, I am have, well, I don't even want to go there. Okay. But in the meantime, um, I'm going to Cindy's next weekend. And then um, the beginning of June, I'm taking my mom's ashes back to Door County. So there's going to be a little interruption here. So just enjoy the process. Just take your time. And I would like to have all of you give applause to Lennox, who has been so good on the couch today. Um, she had to turn off the TV. I've never seen this little girl really under the weather before, and I understand what that looks like now. And I thank you for your kindness, your patience. And yes, we know some things are still screwed up on the site. Uh, for me, I'm having a hard time in the forum. John has no problem. But what I want to say to all of you from the bottom of my heart and all of TQS, your kindness has been just amazing, just absolutely amazing. And I am so blessed to have you choose to spend your time with me as we learn together virtually. And even if and when we completely open up, I just think this is fabulous that we can connect on the internet and I don't think it's going anywhere. All right? Oh, I'm hearing Lennox. She's been so good. Um, yay, Lennox. You're getting, you're getting, yay. You're getting it. Do I have to tell you the secret? I promise to pay her a buck. <laughs> She's all in the money. <laughs> she gets it. <laughs> hey, you guys have a fabulous, um, what is today? Is it Friday? Thank you. Today's Friday. <laughs> we'll see you Monday. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye.